Welcome to Dr. Roger and Friends, the bright side of longevity, hosted by three peas in a podcast, Doc Roger, Teresa, and Danielle. Thanks for joining us for Coffee and Conversation. Beth Sanders is the founder and CEO of LifeBio, an online platform that captures life stories while improving mental health, reducing loneliness, and promoting greater feelings of purpose. LifeBio currently works with more than 100 healthcare organizations. Sanders is also the author of the Memory Journal, Life Story Journal, and more. She believes that everyone has a story to tell and is a specialized legacy consultant who focuses on intergenerational programming, family communications, as well as Alzheimer's and dementia care. Today's topic is Life Bio, the lifeblood of intergenerational storytelling. Well, hello, everybody. My colleagues, Teresa and Danielle, how are you today? Good. It's good to have the gang back together. Yeah. And today we've got a great guest, an old friend of, of all of us, really. Beth Sanders. Welcome, Beth. Thank you for having me. Great to see you guys and hear you guys. (laughs) As you know, with COVID, we haven't been at meetings. We haven't done many things. Uh, We, uh, with you, Beth, and your company, Life Bio, we've been traveling down parallel roads now for a couple decades, you know, and Mm -hmm. used to get to be able to see each other, but uh, not so much lately. So this is, this is a, a bonus and a benefit. And we're really excited for our listeners to hear the story of you and Life Bio because we think it's so, so important. Uh, you know, storytelling to me is is the currency of our species. It, it, it you know it's ancient around campfires, and it still is. Kids going to bed, you know, and even adults. You tell a story, and uh, as long as it's not a boring story. Uh, and you have immediate attention and uh, you can see it resonates. I could see the little DNA resonating in everybody when uh, when you hear a story. And, and, it, and it, it truly is the stuff of being human. So that's what you do. And we're going to we want to hear about it. So it's probably rational. And uh, uh, the, the best thing to do is to maybe give our listeners a, a snapshot, you know, just of life bio, what it is and how does it work? Okay, well, Life Bio, the easiest way to say it now is Life Bio captures life stories for better health. So we have this uh, idea that everyone should and can tell their story. And we're just trying to empower people to do that in a variety of ways. And, uh, you know, listening is love. We just want people to have a chance to listen to each other more and to, to deeply hear that and, uh, and take something uh, from it. You know, when we connect with each other, it's so powerful. And I love Masterpiece Living. You know that because well, you're all about community, bringing, bringing uh, people together and uh, supporting people uh, socially and spiritually. And, and so, of course, we love each other and have for from the beginning when I heard what you're doing and you heard what we were doing with storytelling. So it's good. Uh, Listening is love. How's that guys? Huh? Isn't that something I, you know, I think we can, we can cure the world's problems if we get people to really listen. (laughs) Right. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yes. Give up the need to be right and just listen. (laughs) That's right. That is so true. Yeah. And listening to my own grandma's story is what really led to all this happening. I didn't go into my grandma's house one day knowing that I was going to walk out the door with this aha moment that just changed my life and what I was going to do with my life. So we want to hear about that, Beth. So Life Bio is your creation. Was grandma the inspiration? Tell us, tell us a story. Yeah, she was my inspiration. She lived in our backyard in Erie, Pennsylvania, and I was a journalism uh, graduate, uh, and I felt like I realized my grandma had early stage dementia at dinner time, uh, maybe the night before, and I said, Mom, when are we going to tell grandma's life story? 
And she goes, Beth, there's the tape recorder. You can go do that right now. And I remember being like, I don't know what to ask her. I don't know how to do this. I'm not sure I'm ready to do this. And I had grown up with my grandma. I mean, really, I'd lived on the same street with my grandma. But anyway, it, it, I did it. And I was able to ask her things that I'd never had talked about with her at the dinner table or in general conversation, you know, the normal chit chat of family life. And that day I, she became a whole person to me. I just had never thought of her as a whole person. And uh, I just had seen her in one lens and all of a sudden the, my eyes were open to her as a incredible whole person. And, and even with dementia, she was able to share so much. So there was another aha moment that many people, professionals that work in senior living and healthcare that we work with know that people with uh, memory challenges can go way back and be very clear on what they have to say and what they've learned, you know, from those early days. And so hearing her tell about the first time she saw an airplane uh, as a young girl and hearing about really, she actually told me about the flu epidemic of 1918. uh, Now thinking about pandemic uh, and, you know, realizing all these things she'd lived through and all the accomplishments she had uh, done through the years. She started the first kindergarten. She started the first preschool in my local area there in Pennsylvania. And so I just appreciated her more. We were just completely connected after that conversation. You know, and it, it strikes me when I think about my grandmother, the one day that stands out to me the most, and I was so shocked. You talk about an aha moment. I was around 15 and we happened to go to the mall together and we stopped for lunch. And it was so rare for us to have one-on-one without the whole family. And I just started asking about as a businesswoman, because it was kind of rare for her to be in business, but she did all the numbers while my grandfather did all the baking. And I was learning all of this stuff that I never knew about her. And I left thinking, how did I get go this long without knowing these stories? So it really is life-changing for everybody. You know, and what I like, it came through, Beth, and, and with you, Danielle, mm-hmm. that this wasn't just being nice, listening to an old person run on and on. This was enriching and entertaining. And, um, you know, we actually learn some things, don't we? We do. We do. I mean, she changed my life with her story. And, you know, it's like... She, she gave me advice that I can still repeat to you today. She said, always be straight with people. Be what you want. If you do something, do it the best you can. Well, and, and that's exactly what she said. Mm-hmm. You know, it was recorded. I, I was just like, ah, I want, I want this person remembered. And I want her to, you know, my children need to know what their um, great grandmother had to say. You know, it's that powerful. Um, and, and this idea of like, we think people have nothing to give us as they reach 80 or 90 years. is just so ridiculous. And I can't believe we're, uh, as a society, uh, not doing more to really understand the people in our life. Instead, we're talking about sports or, you know, the news of the day or uh, the weather or, you know, just chit chat. When they have, we have so much to give each other. I love the idea of care partners. You know, we're uh, caring for each other uh, in in community settings or in our own families. You know, Grandma, you're my partner. I'm your partner. Together, we can listen and learn. Yeah. Beautiful now, thing. Absolutely. Now we know life bio can also be adapted for different environments. So can you talk a little bit about the benefits of collecting personal stories in healthcare and senior living for staff and residents? How, how does it adapt it to fit that environment? So I feel like we're on the cusp of a revolution in memory care, this idea that we can help people when they have even early cognitive challenges is is exciting to me. And, and also, you know, again, going from a a place of uh, stimulated and purpose and optimism and resilience in, in independent living, an area, you know, wherever people live, right, where senior living is now doing more and more home care and hospice and, you know, the entire 
uh, life cycle of care wherever people are and wherever they need care, which I love. So all these different environments. Well, anyway, everyone has a story to tell and just making it easy to, uh, we have a new voice-based AI driven platform that's iOS or Android. So, you know, with any tablet, basically, or any phone to empower people to capture people uh, with just voice. So, you know, it's so cool to get away from the typing and the writing and the other ways that we had to uh, engage people when we could just have a conversation and have the right questions to ask, and even photo prompts, uh, so that whoever surrounds that person has the chance to engage. So I, I always feel like, you know, I was, the, I was the lucky grandchild that got to interview grandma, right? I mean, I want those family members or the staff or the volunteers, maybe it's the high school kids across the street, whatever, maybe it, in the COVID times, if even if we're somehow communicating outside the window, I don't care, can we do uh, something together is, is remarkable to me. So to make it easy for people to truly engage and have this deeper conversation is what matters to me. And, and how cool is it that that's improving people's health and well-being, right? So to show that we can reduce depression by, by 15%, to show we actually have a solution for loneliness and that we're moving the needle on that with our, our health plan co- uh, client that we work with, um, can, you know, can we actually increase um, happiness and purpose and meaning? So right, right along the lines of masterpiece living, you guys. Yeah. Well, it's I mean, true. <laughs> it, yeah. well, it's true, and you know, and that uh, when the, they're telling their story, older adults don't feel invisible, which unfortunately is uh, part and parcel of aging in our society today. Yes. And um, that's right. Well, that's a beautiful thing. Yes. And you have, you know, with the social connections, you know, you're focusing in on that. And, and, you know, I, I just think you've been way ahead of the game on seeing the whole person, you know, and of course, people's mental health is going to impact their physical health. Masterpiece provides communities with personalized content that keeps residents engaged and focused on their unique pathway to healthy longevity, no matter the circumstance or external influence. Powered by Masterpiece provides communities with the data and research needed to drive both the resident and community forward. Learn more at MyMasterpieceLiving.com. I saw on your website, I got so excited. I saw life bio memory and the action plan. So is that correct? So if somebody is caring for someone with dementia, they can go in and actually see a snapshot. This person used to be a skydiver or they used to be a sailor and they really love to talk about baseball. I, what made you come up with that? I think it's brilliant way for people to instantly get to know that person as a person, not just somebody they're taking care of. Yeah. So, and it can work with any part of any campus. So people can be aging normally and any cognitive level, any problem, any, or anywhere people live, but an action plan is just like a quick view of things to talk about, things to do, uh, to, you know, customize what's going on for the individuals in a, in a community setting. So it's, it's great because, you know, we have, uh, staff, you know, need a quick way, you know, they just started yesterday. How can they get immediately uh, connected to someone and know what they'd love to talk about? So if we can make that easier, because I'll tell you this, people are fascinating and they're complicated. Okay. They're all individuals. (laughs) They don't all want to do the same thing. Go figure. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So why do we have, you know, we have to, I guess, push the envelope and now the calendar is going to be really different based on what people have always loved to do and how do you really uh, make your community really unique? Because of course your people are unique. So the action plan is that quick one page kind of digital or printed thing that may be hanging uh, behind the scenes somewhere or, uh, you know, 
we also have a snapshot that can be displayed more publicly. So we worry about HIPAA and privacy and security. So the snapshot can literally hang outside somebody's door. The action plan is sometimes behind the scenes with a little more detailed information about what they love and what they don't love. You know, the story that you told us about your grandmother, I mean, it's, I'm still, still uh, so moved and inspired by it. But, you know, unfortunately, we're seeing that less and less today, you know, with a mobile society, somewhat nomadic society, uh, even with technology, that we, we don't get that uh, one, that intergenerational contact that, that you so well described. You know, uh, you've been talking about what it meant to you. And we all know, all four of us, that the value of that is, 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 uh, is priceless, really, not only for the older adult, but for the young, younger people, too, be it a child or a young adult, uh, even a, mi- a mid-level adult. I mean, an intergenerational experience. And you've already alluded to the fact that, you know, it, it's crazy what we're doing. We're, t- we're taking all of this experience and human capital and pushing it off to the side as if it has no value because it's old. Uh, that's crazy. I mean, look at the pandemic. I mean, these, these something that we don't have so many now, but I mean, the, your grandmother had been through a pandemic. Wouldn't you love to have her here today to talk about that with people and what that was like uh, or about World War II or, or the Depression, those sort of things? Because it seems like we all think we're, we're in this the first time, you know, OK, we, we, get, we young people have to figure it out. So could you expand, expand on the intergenerational value of stories and, and how you're going to cure the world of this huge gap that we have between the young people and older adults? I am so glad you've asked this because this is one of my number one missions in, in my mission of improving the entire world if possible. Uh, I totally want younger people to be exposed and and gain from access to older people. And I think that they both face being marginalized and they both face loneliness and isolation right now. And younger people think that they have a really, really, really hard life. And that changes when they hear the story of someone who fought in the Vietnam War or someone who was in, uh, had a, uh, polio before there was a a vaccine for that. I mean, just everyday life, both, both my parents were born at home. They went to the outhouse. They got bathed in a, in a pan, you know, or a a tub in the middle of the living room on, you know, they went over the hill. My dad went over the hill to get, get water. They didn't even have running water in the house. So when I think when younger people can be exposed to that, that makes a difference. Let me talk about an interesting intergenerational thing too, is I see people in maybe their 60s or early 70s interested in interviewing 80 and 90 year olds too. And that could happen right in the community because obviously a lot changed in their lives. And so I would like to encourage communities to start tapping into that the the inside the community intergenerational things that could happen too yeah, and sure. especially during COVID I mean come on where what can we do right now to get people uh, there's no reason why things can be done in-house but uh, I think that simplifying like we said with like this life bio memory app that the goal was how simple can you make it so that people can just listen and get a chance to connect Uh, because then they will learn and then they will grow. So a lot of work we've done is with, we have a program called Life BioConnect where we bring youth and older people together and they could be uh, coming from a high school or they could be, interestingly, during COVID, we figured out ways for them to visit over just standard phones or through Zoom where it does not have to be face-to-face right now, but they have built really strong friendships. And I can send you a picture of, they finally got to meet after interviewing each other. Uh, Oh my goodness, I have to tell you this. For the first time during COVID, we had older people interview the youth. Nice. 
So it went both ways and they both ended up with their book at the end. Oh my Uh, goodness. uh, That's terrific. We actually got to uh, interview my grandson uh, during COVID. You know, he was, he was just starting uh, college. And so we wanted to see how he felt about all that. And it was, it was enlightening for me. Uh Oh man, that's great. So yeah, let's, let's take it both ways. Oh, one more thing. I want all the grandparents that may listen to this to, to uh, tell their grandchildren, listen, I'm going to tell you a story now, like own it. Okay, guys, I, you I I got to tell you, I am, I've got a lot of wisdom. I've got a lot of stuff. I've been through stuff. I'm not going to just chit chat with you. I want you to put down, I want you to turn off your phone and I want you to listen while I tell you about your great grandma own it yeah it's like the insurance commercial it says we know a thing or two we've been around (laughs) yes Yes. they need the information they they'll they're struggling and we know that younger people right now it's been hard on them too you can help them realize they are resilient they are like you they can get through it they absolutely can. And it also dispels the, uh, the, the, the stereotype and the, the erroneous view that young people really don't want to listen to older adults. I, I think once you can get the technology out of the way, of course, that's life uh, consuming for young people. But if you can do that, uh, I think that they're entranced in, in many, many cases, in most cases, in fact, because the stories are so foreign and uh, so compelling. So we yes. got to do more of that. Let's That's do it right. together. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hey, you know, hey, a lot of times people say they have nothing to say either. Oh, my goodness. Just describing, like I said, the, the way you way you gathered water when you were a kid, you know, something with with us. It, it was fascinating to tell some young people that I know about uh, how we, um, you know, didn't have phones, you know, to truly describe to your grandkids what it was like to be on a, a trip and maybe get separated from people or you know just explaining normal life stuff it doesn't have to be you know I did this amazing thing and that amazing thing you know but uh and I don't know why this popped into my head but we had you know when we ask people questions one of them is like what is your greatest accomplishment and one of the CEOs said teaching my grandson to read so the questions, when we ask them, you're just shocked, is amazed at what people say about their school life and their work life and their life. Now, every time I ask this question on interviews, somebody makes me cry. So I don't, it, it's okay if you make me cry, but we'd love to hear one or two success stories that really sit with you. Okay. So I already told us a few (laughs) I did, I did, but, and it, well, this just plays into what I just said. Like I, I got to go to a nursing home in uh, Minnesota and uh, they wanted me to interview, you know, just, just met this guy Uh, and he, and I can send you a video to it later if you want to post it so people could see it because it's been out on YouTube, but he's a potato farmer or he was, he's now deceased, but at the time he, he was sharing just that everyday life of what it was like to be a potato farmer and you can watch him kind of come out of his shell as he gets warmed up to me asking these questions that he had no idea what I was going to ask he was sitting in front of other uh, residents in the nursing home and just letting me ask him whatever I wanted to ask it's beautiful Mm, it's just amazing and um uh, just to see, uh, I guess the I mentioned I mentioned the woman had um, woman had polio who really changed my life with her resilience. Like here she is with so many physical problems, but so uh, just watching her change, you know, so, social and very much uh, understanding that she could give back she could give to me by sharing her story and how she had been through um, the diagnosis and like she had been in an iron lung and then she had um, you know come out of that and been a young mom at the time and and how she had to change her life to make it through that and one more comes to me is uh 
a man who was at uh, one of the concentration camps and and was you know adamant about I have to tell my story I have to I have to explain what I saw for this is important for everybody to hear so it, wow. so many and I, I got to add one more my own father was a Vietnam vet and um, and his story is so tragic and so hard to hear but just so beautiful like a life of just hard hard times and then such love and care for his family it's just an incredible story so i love all of these stories <laughs> danielle you made me cry yeah. I mean, you <laughs> goes the other way i'm usually the one bawling <laughs> but it was a beautiful uh, beautiful stories thanks for sharing Beth, it seems to me tell me tell me if this is accurate it seems to me that in our society today you know, we don't necessarily take the time to ask good questions, deeper questions, and then be really good listeners um, yeah. for the answer. And, and it seems to me that that's what life bio solves. Is that, is that an accurate sentence? That is an accurate sentence. I think half the battle is asking the right questions. Yeah. And that and was, kudos, kudos to your mom. I just want to give kudos to your mom because you went to your mom and said, mom, how are you going to document grandma's story? And your mom said, I'm not, you are right. Yeah. So kudos to her too. And then you as a child yeah. went to grandma and asked good, deep questions. And I don't think that's a skill that every child has. And I also don't think it's a skill that every adult has. So kudos to you too. I think your career started then. How old were you? Actually, I was uh, 23 or 24. Oh, you weren't so I wasn't, okay. I would, but, you know, but I wasn't that old. And I still oh. was more comfortable as a journalist interviewing a police chief than my own grandmother. <laughs> I was like, Mom, what am I going to, what am I going to say? I don't even know where to begin. And I think that's how f- most young people would be like, I'm scared. Yeah. I don't know what to ask my own grandma. I don't know how to do it. So it was really important at the very beginning to figure out and now hone in on what are the right questions? How do you do this yes. in an organized way that's um, positive? The question can't be a negative, take people down a, you know, take people where describe your mother to someone who's never met her or describe your childhood home inside and outside. Yeah. Uh, you know, the little things that people walk me down the street with you, right. who were your neighbors? What did it smell like and look like? And like, who was your friend? I've had older people that I've interviewed, like over the phone is one I remember who said she gets, gets on the phone with me and she says, you know what? I don't feel well today. I don't think I can do this. I go, that's okay. We'll just schedule this another time. It's, it's okay. Well, what's the first question? I go, well, I'd like to know about your childhood friends and the things you used to play. Well, we were down at the Crick and we had our dolls and we set up a tea party and it was just fabulous. We didn't have anything. We just were playing with sticks and stones and making up this thing. And we were splashing in the creek. And I mean, like, I love it when people just go there. Mm -hmm. And you can hear in her voice the change as she's like, I'm there. So I think that's some of the the life story work stuff I love is that it really does work because it's such an incredibly good distraction. (laughs) Yeah, good, good questions. I can see that some questions would be difficult or triggering or uh, send you down a difficult path, but that's what you've spent decades doing is, is iterating until you found the right questions, right. Yes. That are, that create the health outcomes that you've, that you've measured right. such good stuff, Beth. And, and Teresa, you just made me think of, you know, nobody's led, led a perfect life. Mm-hmm. And so they'll say, Oh, I can't do that. I just can't, you know, cause I've had a very hard life and it's like, how many people have had a hard life? Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes it's time to get it off your chest. It's okay. And you may find out in, in a community setting that somebody else had a really tough relationship in their home and, or they had a really hard marriage or, you know, people need friends. Mm-hmm. They need, they've just moved into a community. Who are these people? 
you know, oh, I've, I, my life's a total screw up and everybody else thinks they, you know, I've <laughs> has had a perfect life. I think people actually think that when they move in, it's like, oh, wait, wait, we all have had hard times. Sure. So that's Definitely. okay from the story to embrace that, I guess, a little bit and go, right. okay, well, let's talk about this thing then. Right. So good. Beth, what's coming for life bio? How many decades have you been at it? For uh, That's my first question. And then what's coming next for life bio? The company officially started in March, 2020. I didn't leave my day job till 2006. We didn't become a C corporation till 2012. It is 2021. Um, the focus is on this on the storytelling and actually um, working with people of all different cognitive abilities and focusing in on loneliness. So we have both, you know, apps and um, phone based things to, to solve for, uh, I guess, for, you know, engagement, helping people be more well, Alzheimer's disease and, um, and loneliness, which we think is an epidemic. Uh, and I, I, I see us moving more and more actually into even diagnostic tools for dementia care, believe it or not. Wow. So it's all, all not nearly what I thought I'd be doing. <laughs> it was just, oh, let's tell people stories. And now it's like, okay, we can actually improve health and well-being and track that and improve the, you know, clinical outcomes even is, is where I think we're heading. And okay. does that make people feel better? Yay. It certainly does. And uh, I don't I don't know if anyone in this uh, group here uh, is where they thought they would be at this point in their life. So that's something that an older person can tell a younger person, you know, make your plan. That's good. Have a life plan, but be nimble because it's a ride. (laughs) It is such a ride. Yes, it is. (laughs) Seth, where can people go to learn more about Life Bio? So www.lifebio.com. They can just give us a call at 866-LIFE-BIO uh, or 937-303-4576. And uh, they can email info at lifebio.com. But I just want to say that you have done something so amazing. I remember when I first met you, I was like, ah, I found my kindred spirits in this world. You no. know no. and love people and are just how helping them live their best life, aren't you? We are, we are together. And luckily there are many of us uh, all moving down this same road and uh, we're having an effect and we will continue to, cause we're not giving up, are we? No, <laughs> no problem. We're it's, um, it's just a, maybe a change in mindset that we've been a part of for a long time. And we're going to keep turning the, turning the corner, keep going. Well, I want to send a message to your grandmother. What you told Beth stuck, it's stuck (laughs) and it's stuck in such a way that she, uh, well, for us today and for what you do, you're, you're an ointment on a divided society, on an ages society, on on all many of the woes we have in the society, which we can fix. And, uh, like we said in the beginning here, stories, they're the stuff of being human and the stuff of, of humanity and, Thank you for what you do. Uh, we are all better for it. And um, we're, we're going to continue to work with you and support what you do. And thank you for your kind words. And uh, I think when we're all together, we, we can do this. We can do this. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. We are better together. Masterpiece is driven by data and powered by content. Maximizing healthy longevity is achievable at all times with the right metrics and content, enabling informed decisions. Powered by Masterbees can support your community in the critical areas of focus that drive healthy longevity for your residents, staff, and community. Learn more at MyMasterpieceLiving.com. We want to continue to provide information that is valuable and reliable to our listeners. We welcome your comments and suggestions for topics that are important to you. Please see the description of this episode to contact the Brightside team.
You've been listening to Dr. Roger and Friends, The Bright Side of Longevity. If you like the show, please rate and review, and be sure to click to follow.